And now on to our dinosaur of the day, Saturnalia, which was a request from Crow via our Patreon and Discord. So thank you. It was a basal sauropodomorph that lived in the late Triassic in what is now Brazil in the Santa Maria Formation of Rio Grande and possibly Zimbabwe in the Pebbly Arcos Formation. Back then, those weren't too far apart. Yeah. It had a mix of sauropodomorph and theropod characteristics, so it's been kind of hard to classify in the past. But it was small, with a long neck and a long tail, and short arms, and it had a gracile body. It was estimated to be about five feet or one and a half meters long. Oh, that is small. Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. That's funny. For some reason, I always imagine it as a sauropodomorph with longer arms. I think I've always heard it was a sauropodomorph, and it just, in my head, was way bigger. It had bigger arms (laughs) than that. Those Triassic animals get weird. They do. The type species is Saturnalia tupaniquum. I'm not entirely sure how that part is pronounced. The species? The species name, yeah. It comes from Portuguese and Guarani, and it's a, quote, endearing way of referring to native things from Brazil. Hmm. That's nice. Yeah. So Saturnalia was named in 1999 by Max Langer and others, and the genus name means carnival in Latin, and that refers to the fossils being found during the feasting period. <laughs> yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, Saturnalia is such a fun concept. You mm-hmm. know, it goes all the way back to ancient Roman and Greek times. Yeah, yeah, it was a really popular Roman festival dedicated to the Roman god Saturn, and it was originally celebrated on December 17th, and then it was extended to be a whole week of celebration. And in case you're curious, the Greek version of the Roman Saturn is Cronus for any Greek and Roman mythology buffs out there. And Saturnalia, it was celebrated with a sacrifice at the Temple of Saturn. And there were also banquets, gift giving, and a lot of parties or carnivals. And people were also allowed to gamble during that week. And they also named a mock king, Saturnalicius Princeps. Gifts could include wax figurines, dice combs, toothpicks, axes, perfumes, parrots, clothing, books, and a lot more. And sometimes there were verses that went with the gifts, kind of like how we have cards today. If some of these things sound familiar, a lot of the Saturnalia customs became customs or influenced Christmas and New Year. Huh. That's cool. Mm-hmm. Now back to the dinosaur. <laughs> the Saturnalia dinosaur was named based on three partial skeletons that were all found in the same area in 1988. The holotype includes a well-preserved, semi-articulated skeleton, vertebrae, pectoral girdle, right humerus, partial right ulna, pelvic girdle, left femur, and most of the right hind limb. Okay, so it's like mostly the hips and the stuff around the hips and a little bit of arm. For the holotype. But then the other skeletons included a partial mandible with teeth and partial skeleton vertebrae, pectoral girdle, right humerus, right side of the pelvic girdle, most of the right hind limb. Oh, cool. Oh, yeah, you said pectoral girdle for the first one, which is like shoulder blades and stuff. Mm -hmm. That's pretty good. It's nice that they have two that overlap a bunch, too, so you can squash out some of the individual variation. True. And a possible partial femur was found in Zimbabwe that might belong to Saturnalia. Yeah, it's hard to tell from just a partial femur. Yes. Saturnalia was the second dinosaur found in the Carnian Alamoa beds of southern Brazil, and that's one of the oldest strata with dinosaur fossils. The discovery helped show evidence of widespread distribution of early sauropodomorphs in the late Carnian. About 230 million years ago, roughly. Mm Mm-hmm. And in 2003, Max Langer published even more details about the anatomy of Saturnalia. They found that the first metatarsal was much shorter than the second and third ones. The first one was about 60% the length of the second and 55% the length of the third. There were also scars and other traces of muscle attachments on the body. And they found that Saturnalia had limbs adapted to running, more so than typical sauropodomorphs. Saturnalia could walk on two or four legs, but it was probably bipedal when it was moving quickly. Especially since you said it has short arms. Yes, although it probably was not an obligatory biped. Meaning it spent some time on all fours? It probably walked on two legs more often than other prosauropods to run away from predators or hunt for small prey. You got a sauropod hunting? 
like I said, had some theropod characteristics. <laughs> oh, that's that's the theropod part of it, I see. <laughs> <laughs> Saturnalia's gait was, quote, probably somewhere between that of a fully bipedal dinosaur like Coelophysis and that of forms such as Platyosaurus, which were mainly quadrupedal, becoming bipedal only at high speeds, end quote. In 2017, Mario Bronzati and others studied the endocast of Saturnalia. They looked at the flocular fossa lobe, the FFL, which is, quote, part of the systems operating to control eyes, neck, and head movements, end quote. There's apparently a smaller volume of FFL in sauropods, and in the past, that's been thought to be linked to sauropods being quadrupedal. The idea is that you need more balance control when you're bipedal versus when you're quadrupedal, and that balance involves the FFL and inner ear. But the FFL volume has been found to vary in other dinosaur endocast studies, including theropods. So FFL may not be related to how they moved. It's possible that a well-developed flocculus could be linked to predatory behavior because it helps the dinosaur move its neck and skull quickly. Yeah, I think we've heard that before. Mm -hmm. I really like the word flocculus, by the way. <laughs> it's a good <laughs> Very one. fun to say. <laughs> they also studied the teeth of Saturnalia, and found recurved teeth with small serrations. That does seem pretty predator-type mm -hmm. teeth. So based on studying Platyosaurus and Saturnalia, it's possible that FFL went down in bipedal sauropodomorphs before they evolved to be quadrupedal, and it may have been linked to their herbivorous diet. In 2019, Mario Bronzati and others studied the skull remains of Saturnalia, and they CT scanned the skull bones of one of the paratypes. They found that the small skull may be related to, quote, an increased efficiency for predatory feeding behavior, allowing fast movements of the head in order to secure small and elusive prey, end quote. And that supports the endocast study that had been done earlier. Saturnalia had a short skull. It was lightweight. It was about 3.9 inches or 10 millimeters long and small compared to the rest of its body. So to recap, the small skull of Saturnalia helped it with its long neck, which helped later sauropods eat plants that other animals couldn't reach, the long neck that is, and then eventually gave sauropods that advantage and helped them grow so large. Saturnalia may have been able to move its head quickly and go after small prey. It had heterodont teeth, where some were more leaf-shaped, and others were higher and coarsely serrated. So Saturnalia may have been an omnivore, eating lizards, mammals, insects, as well as plants. For those of you who listen to our Dinosaur of the Day segment and you like it, please consider becoming a patron. We take new Dinosaur of the Day requests from our patrons and offer a bunch of other perks as well. So check out our page at patreon.com slash or click the link on the left.